Taiwan is bursting with heaps of fun places to explore. Join me, Amber Hatfield, as I hit up travel hotspots, soak up some culture, and hunt down hidden gems. Let's go! Hi, and welcome back to Let's Go. I'm your host, Amber Hatfield. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about traveling to South Korea from Taiwan. Last week's episode was all about getting to Thailand from Taiwan and Michelle Chang's adventures at diving in the Similan Islands. Now, this week, we're going to be talking to my wonderful guest, Harrell Hughes, about her recent experiences of traveling from Taiwan to South Korea. Hi, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming in. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Can you tell me about kind of where travel started for you and how, what places you have traveled to around the world? You know, growing up, my friend in middle school, so this was between the ages of 11 to 14 years old um her mom was from dublin ireland and she was this amazing woman and she would just tell us all of her crazy backpacking stories which included going to india and being chased by monkeys across some rooftops uh-huh. for a mango and everything like that uh-huh. and my friend and i used to just dream about all the travel places we wanted to go to okay and then also in the u.s they have this tv channel called the travel channel Okay. Literally the travel channel. And we always had that on TV. And it was always, always watching it, always wanted to go around. Um, Yeah. One of my heroes is Anthony Bourdain, just such an amazing person. And yeah, I really think traveling is just makes people better people. And how lucky are we that we get to travel? Because, you know, majority of the world doesn't travel the world at all. Mm -hmm. And especially being in a position with my American passport, also having a European passport getting to travel the world, getting visas. It's been really nice Um, and very humbling as well. So I could not tell you how many countries I've been to, which sounds really (laughs) terrible to say. (laughs) But I've been to six continents um, and met some really amazing people and learned a lot and hope to keep going. Yeah, I mean, you're also not just like uh, talking about holidays either. You've lived abroad. You've lived abroad like for most of your adult life as well. Yeah, so um, I've lived in nine countries now. And I think I first left the U.S. when I was 20 and um, to live abroad, not Mm -hmm. just traveling abroad. Um, And yeah, my first time living abroad was actually in Australia, which was really fun. I think that's a good, easy place to move to for Mm -hmm. a first time person living out of their home country because, you know, obviously shared language. Um, I was also studying there and Mm -hmm. I got to live in a beach town and it was just fantastic. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. And then I lived in some more challenging places that it's extreme culture shock and just extremely different Uh Um, and I wouldn't necessarily put Taiwan there because Taiwan is a very I would say relatively easy place to move to aside from language and of course some cultural barriers but there are other places in the world that I think are a lot more challenging Mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. I also spent time in Australia as well I thought Australia is definitely a good place to travel to as uh, an English speaker who only spoke English for me at that time I didn't speak any Mandarin so Mm -hmm. I only spoke English and so it's just easy to get around easy to do everything a hotter version of England kind of (laughs) I mean it pretty much is (laughs) So you've been in Taiwan also for quite a while now. Yeah, I think it's a a little over a year and a half now. But my mom has lived here for a few years. So I've come to visit many times. Um, She first moved here in 2017. And I came for a month at that time just to help her move in. Um, And then I previously came in, I want to say it was 2019 for two months during winter break. Um, Mm -hmm. I got to travel a bit around Taiwan and then outside Taiwan too. And then finally got to move here, which has been nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this time you've been here for almost two years, is it? It'll be two years in August. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Coming up. (laughs) Feels weird. (laughs) And being in Taiwan is such a great spot to explore other places around Asia. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I mean, I've been to quite a few places around Asia since living in Taiwan. I love to go to the Philippines. Also. Thailand and Japan, mm-hmm. South Korea. They're so close. Honestly, it's like a two hour flight sometimes. And mm-hmm. that's, that's pretty rare and fantastic. And it's also affordable, which yes. I'm a big fan of. So I want to find out more about your recent trip in South Korea. Yes. So what regions did you go to? What places did you go to in South Korea? And was it your first time traveling there? So it was not my first time. Um, I went last year, last January over Lunar New Year. Um, to Seoul and it was freezing cold (laughs) when I was there I think it was minus 15 degrees Celsius wow yeah it was really cold I actually have a photo of myself with icicles on my eyelashes because it was so cold outside but that was really fun to go to I went by myself and then met some friends 
there as well, but most of the time was by myself and um, hanging out with people in my hostel, which was really nice. Mm -hmm. And then this most recent time I went, I actually went with my mom. So it was a very different trip. Different experience for sure. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. And uh, it was nice being in Seoul again. Um, But yeah, different experience with my mom for sure. Mm -hmm. And so what's your kind of impression of South Korea? Maybe as compared to Taiwan, do you find it quite similar there or quite Not different? at all. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, of course, being in East Asia, there are similarities, but then I, there were just huge differences. And I, the first time I went to Seoul, I was there, I think, 10 days. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I really oh, it's found, quite a long trip. Yeah, but I really found... Well, I actually flew into Daegu at first. Um, which is in the middle of South Korea, the the city of Daegu. Okay. And it was a much cheaper flight from Seoul to Daegu. Uh-huh. I think, um, yeah, much cheaper. I spent two days there and then just took the bus up to Seoul, which saved me probably one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> which That's I'm good. a big yeah, I'm a big fan of that. And uh-huh. then I like seeing another another city, and then I love taking a long bus ride through through the country. Yeah, you got to see a lot. Yeah. Yeah. People ask me why I didn't take the bullet train, mm-hmm. and but that. That would be an hour, you know, and you don't see as much. And I would rather have a chill bus ride mm-hmm. going up all the way through the mountains. That was really nice. Through the mountains? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah, Seoul's really, I mean, South Korea is really mountainous, so that reminds me of Taiwan. Mm-hmm. But um, when I was in South Korea, I found myself really missing Taiwan. Okay. Because Taiwan is so chill. Uh huh. And you almost don't recognize that until you leave. Okay. So being in, you know, you're in Tokyo, you're in Seoul, you're in these other big cities and people are hustling, people dress differently. There's just a different atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And then I found found myself really missing Taipei. And even though Taipei is a big city, it's still incredibly chill. Yeah. The way people dress and tons of hiking gear and just, it's just very relaxed compared. And I, yeah, I found myself missing that. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I guess I haven't really spent that much time in South Korea. I went to South Korea once um, and it was on a trip with my work. Okay. It was like, um, that was when I was a teacher. And so there was one like company trip. So we went on this company trip, but it was on one of those tour buses. So the tour bus kind of drives you around and we got taken to loads of different places. Like I mean, there's place, benefits to that. A ginseng store yeah. and like things things like that. Mm. And we got a little bit of time to kind of explore by ourselves. But I definitely want to go back because I don't really feel like I got much of a feel for South Korea in general. Like I didn't really spend long enough time there. And Yeah. And yeah. it's much different on a guided tour. Mm-hmm. You know, they take you to all these places. They kind of shuffle you around, which has its benefits. You know, someone driving you around. But then you don't get to have the, I don't know, the other experiences that you could have by yourself. Or yeah. Even with your mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you were in uh, Seoul this time. Mm-hmm. And so you were there for just a few days. Yeah. We just went for the tomb sweeping holiday in Taiwan. Uh, so that's a four day holiday. Yeah. Four days. Yeah. So we were there for five days total. And we actually flew out of Taiwan the day of the big earthquake here. Yes. Which was pretty scary Uh Um, obviously that that happened in the morning and my mom and I had our flights in the afternoon Mm -hmm. and you know a bit worried about making our flights of course and and granted there's a national tragedy going on so if our flights had been canceled that would have been okay yeah Uh, but luckily the airports weren't in Taipei at least weren't impacted yeah Um, my mom actually made her flight with two minutes to spare did she? Yeah, she was running through all the. She was running through the airport. She was trying to get her flight. She was with some other family, also going to South Korea, who were trying to help her. Oh, okay. and she got it right before the doors closed. Wow, so. that's so lucky. Yeah, we were two really minutes. Happy. Two minutes. Oh literally. my gosh. Yeah. So, how was flying to Seoul on the long weekend? Because I know that the tickets are always really expensive on a long weekend from Taiwan to any of the places you know around this area surrounding countries for the long weekends people always try to get away out of Taiwan and the flight prices can increase by like three four times they're so much more expensive than they are normally did you end up spending a ton of money when you bought that ticket man so one thing to know about me with traveling is I'm very last minute with buying flights (laughs) and I (laughs) to the chagrin of my mom but um Very last minute with buying flights, and I always search for deals. I'm constantly monitoring and looking, and I have my tricks to find flights. Uh So my mom bought her flights months ago, I want to say in January or something. Uh And she kept asking me, have you bought your flight? Have you bought your flight? I'm like, Mom, I'll I'll get it. No worries. And I was looking at flights, and of course they had gone up 
five times the usual amount. Um, mm-hmm. And it was really frustrating because you look at the next weekend going to Seoul, and again, the one that I wanted to was five times more. And it's just like, well, just go a different weekend? Yeah. Yeah. So I was really looking at flights, and they had gone up so much that then I just kept putting it off because I didn't want to spend that much money. Uh-huh. But I wanted to go with my mom, of course. Yeah. And then I finally, I want to say the week before our trip, the flights went back down. And I was really lucky also because there's two airports in Taipei, the mm-hmm. Taoyuan Airport, which takes maybe an hour to get to, I want to say. Yeah. Um, and then there's Songshan, which is right in the city center. Mm-hmm. And I managed to get a pretty cheap flight from the city center airport. So I didn't have to rush in the morning. Uh, my mom was coming up from southern Taiwan on the HSR train, the high-speed rail. So she had to keep stopping for aftershocks after the earthquake. And that's why she was such a rush to make her flight. Mm -hmm. And I felt so lucky. I just got to catch a taxi and go to the airport within 15 minutes. And security was nothing. The airport was pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. It was really great, honestly. Yeah, I've never flown from that Songshan airport before. I think I need to try it. It's fantastic. It was my second time flying out of there. Uh, The other time I flew to Tokyo. Uh And it's right near my office. So I was able to get there within 10 minutes after work. So convenient. Yeah, you should definitely get there. Really, really good. (laughs) So when you were on your trip, let's go back to that. I want to know about what did you see? What did you do when you're in Seoul? What kind of stuff is there to do for a long weekend for a tourist? Ooh, Yeah, so um, luckily it was my second time there. So my first time I kind of got to see the more touristy things. Mm -hmm. I went to palaces. I went to, you know, the museums. And everything like that. So I don't want to say I got that out of the way, but (laughs) it was nice for the second time knowing what I already wanted to do, what I already wanted to see. Uh And then I love going to art museums. So for Mm -hmm. me, that was a big thing as opposed to seeing the historical museums this time. I just wanted to go see. Seoul has a really cool modern art museums and they have so many of them. So I really wanted to make that a priority for me. And also we stayed, I stayed in a different neighborhood this time. Uh-huh. So my first trip, I stayed in, in Soldong, which is near the, the big palace. But this time, because I was with my mom and she was paying for the hotel, <laughs> we stayed in Myeongdong, which is okay. like it's a big tourist area. There's the big night market there. It's right. the shopping district, which usually I wouldn't choose to stay there, but it is very convenient. You just mentioned night market. Mm. And now I'm thinking, is this a night market similar to the kind of night markets that are in Taiwan? Or is this a different kind of thing? The one in Myeongdong, I would say, is very similar, but more, <laughs> 100% more touristy. So in this is very specific to the Myeongdong area that we were staying. Um, but it's a shopping area, so they have all the kind of kitschy tourist shops there mm-hmm. that are meant for people to come in and kind of make their own personalized thing. So they have, you know, tote bags, they have keychains, they have little cute anime figurines. You know, it's very much geared towards people coming to South Korea and Mm -hmm. lights and, you know, East Asia, etc. Yeah. Uh, And then all along the streets there, they have the food vendors who are selling those, um, I don't know what they're called, but the fish-shaped Korean pastries. Uh So it's a a breading and usually inside they have red bean or chocolate, um, butter, cream, etc. And then they have the sugar coated fruits that everyone loves to take pictures with. Oh, yeah. I think you're getting the vibe. Yeah, they have those in Taiwan as well. Yeah. 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 And everyone everyone gets a photo eating them Mm because they look cute, but then Mm -hmm. they're really sharp and they cut your mouth. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> they do. They do. And they're, they're so do. sweet. I, I'm i not really a fan, honestly. No, I just wanted to try the grapes because the grapes really excited me. <laughs> oh, were they as good as they looked? They were pretty good. Oh, they were. Okay. But the sugar was warm. So then the grape was warm and that, you know, but you had to try it. Yeah. It's worth it's a great try. To try. <laughs> yeah. So I would say, it, again, it goes back to that Taiwan is so chill feeling mm-hmm. where the night markets here, you see locals there. It's very authentic and, you know. It's like a traditional thing. Everyone goes to night markets. But the one in Myeongdong that I went to, it just seemed like foreigners and tourists. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you could tell it was geared toward that. Mm, mm. Okay. Which isn't, yeah, again, isn't bad because it makes it accessible. But yeah. after being in so many crowds of tourists, I was not very into it. <laughs> yeah. So you were probably ready to get some other kinds of food. Go for dinner. Go for go for some yummy Korean yes. dinner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Had to go to Korean barbecue. Okay. Which is my favorite. So there is a small area um, actually right near Myeongdong, but it's called Ujiro. Okay. I'm probably saying it wrong. 
But it's um, it's a really small neighborhood, and it's known as being a very hip, trendy area. Okay. And I like it because a lot of people go to Hongdae mm-hmm. or Itaewon, which are also very hip neighborhoods. But mm-hmm. those, to me, are for 20-year-olds trying to go out and go clubbing and stuff. Yeah, I've heard that Itaewon is the place where all the clubs are. I think I yeah. went there when I went to Korea yeah. on that trip. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Itaewon is fun. but And then Hongdae, for me, is for 20-year-olds who are... Okay. We're just trying to go clubbing and uh-huh. you know, I'm not 20 anymore. <laughs> so I want I want a cool neighborhood that has cocktail bars and is a bit more chill, but then still has the option for more fun things like that. Uh huh. Yeah. So one of there is I have a favorite bar there. That's it's kind of like an abandoned warehouse upstairs that you have to find, you Ooh, know, fun. Yeah. And then there is good Korean barbecue there that we went to that was fantastic. You know, they grill the meat in front of you. Mm-hmm. You get all the side dishes. And then the best part is my mom is vegetarian. So I got to eat everything. Oh, is she? <laughs> she is. Yeah. Oh. She doesn't eat meat. So she had um, the kimchi ramen stew, uh-huh. which is also delicious. But she also cannot handle spicy food. Oh, that's got to be tricky. So, so I had to eat everything. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> she pays, you eat. She, I actually paid for that. Dinner, oh, okay. <laughs> I felt, I felt too bad. <laughs> she got the hotel room. <laughs> Are there any other um, Korean foods that you love? Also in Uljiro, there is this restaurant I went to that I saw an Anthony Bourdain had gone to, and I wanted to go to it. Uh huh. Because there they have this sort of herbal tea that has nuts in it, that's kind of brothy, and then they put an egg yolk in it. Okay. And I saw Anthony Bourdain had it, and I was like, I got to try that. Uh Uh-huh. And it's right in Uljiro, so I found it, and then I remember walking in and just seeing BTS posters everywhere. (laughs) I was like, what has happened? And I met the owner, and she says that apparently BTS had filmed some stuff there and also had the same thing. Ah. I was like, oh, but Anthony Bourdain, where's his picture? But also BTS, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, so that was really nice. I like to try, if I can try something traditional, mm-hmm. and I think especially with food and beverages, anything, you got to try it. Yeah. You know? It was so good. Mm. And same with eating, you know, whatever it is. Just, just try it. Don't knock it until you try it. That's all for this week's episode of Let's Go. Join me next week where I'll continue chatting with Harrell Hughes about South Korea. See you next time.